This is Atlantis as it was first imagined by Plato. Plato was a Greek philosopher and he wrote these stories about Atlantis. The way I see it, he was trying to manipulate or control the populace of Greece which was actually flourishing at the time and was giving them some sort of look at what happens if you get blessed by the gods and you don't follow the gods as planned then this is what happens to that civilization so now atlantis has been adopted by multiple comic books and movies like black panther nemo and dc's aquaman when it was first imagined it was a great island that was created by poseidon for his wife i don't know what's up with these guys and sleeping with mortal women but he was sleeping with the mortal women and the, he created this island where his wife and child atlas will live and rule so that's why it's called atlantis and the ocean surrounding it is called Atlantic Ocean. It's all based on this mythology created by Plato. But what can we learn from it? What other civilizations can we find in the ocean that have adopted the style of living that they mentioned in Atlantis? And how can we actually as a civilization move to live in these floating cities and build our civilization? So the civilization that have evolved in the ocean and to me this is like the closest thing that we have to the Atlantis that was imagined by Plato. I think for these particular people it's interesting how they live and how they survive in the ocean and how they evolve to become how they are and why it's beneficial for them to actually be the real life Atlantis. It's more interesting to look back at other civilizations that actually have sunk in and they took up this practice of living close or nearby the ocean or rivers. There are multiple benefits of building a civilization next to a large body of water. This will make it easy for people to transport things, find food like hunt or fish. With hunting of course like it's simple I think every animal has to come to the body of water to drink. It's easy for them to grow their crops, feed their livestock with the water that's close by. But if the water rises it swallows the entire town and others are flooded by these rivers or dams that have been created. So now we look back at what are these real life Atlantis cities. It's interesting to find and see how these ancient people lived and finding their ruins buried under like a pile of water. The most interesting one is the Lion City in China. This one was like predetermined because they were already building like a, a dam. They didn't even think that this dam would destroy the city. And this city now has been recognized for its contributions to the entire Chinese economy at the time before like it was flooded, right? But let's go back to like the nomads of now that are living in the ocean. The people that I call the real life Atlantis, the real life Atlantean. There are a couple of tribes that are really interesting to me, right? But the most one that most people understand or know is the Banju because they've been studied a lot. So these are the people that live in boats. They live in boats. They just roam around the ocean and find fish and feed off like the ocean. So these people have developed and evolved to have bigger lungs so that they can breathe underwater longer than anyone. Up to like 10 minutes. They are the best divers in the world. Their whole life is just the ocean and they even pray to the ocean. Their God is the ocean. I think these people to me, if you want to compare the ocean to Poseidon or whatever, the ocean provides for them. You know the, the storm Stone provides <laughs> but yeah these people are provided by the ocean you can find these people the banjos in the philippines but there are way more of these people that are living in these types of civilization so you can find these nomads roaming around in the pacific the indian and even the atlantic ocean right they are called the ocean gypsies you know the gypsies they are people that move around so these people move around the ocean and they build islands like inside the ocean and now since like it's more developed they can move their islands to closer to like the cities where they can sell the fish and gather more food to eat. Now it's simple to be a nomad because you can find something to eat easier than before. These food, this money, they can buy things. But they still live in this type of Atlantic situation. Atlantis lifestyle, living Atlantically. <laughs> So now it's easier for them to find food because they can sell fish and go back to living their Atlantis way. What can we learn from Atlantis and the sea nomads as a civilization so that it grows and it helps us now currently, right? There's been a long-standing competition by the sea steering institution. There have been uh, multiple designs 
to actually build floating cities in the ocean so that we can build towns or cities in the ocean and we can live there. Some of these designs that have been proposed to the sea steering institution are based on the sea nomads rule of movement so that your island has to be able to move at any point so that if there's less food or if there's less something in the area that you are in you are able to move. So these will be able to be moved by boats. But first, let me explain what the sea steering is. So according to Wikipedia, the sea steering institution is a non-profit organization formed to facilitate the establishment of autonomous mobile communities on seaborne platforms operating international waters, a proposed practice called sea steering. It was founded by Wayne Whatever. You can go check it out for yourself, but I think it's a good initiative for people that are worried about overpopulation or whatever. We can just have these multiple communities in the ocean. But I also have a problem with it because currently we're making the sea louder. There's a video done by Fox saying that the seismic surveys are disturbing the animals that communicate with echolocation. So if like we take that into account like the boats and whatever are already creating so much noise inside the ocean or whatever, do we really want to pollute the ocean even more? But if you have ideas, comment below what you think and subscribe. It's free.